Hi, everyone, and thanks so much for joining our November battlefield call today. Um, this, you know, we typically don't host battlefield calls in November, but we do have a couple of really important updates that we wanted to make sure we were sharing with you all. Um, so this will be a shorter call, but I hope you guys find it useful and informative today. So jumping right into it, uh, my name is Megan Shoemaker. I'm the channel development representative for our digital design team. Uh, we also have Kaylee on the line. Uh, she is our marketing campaign manager, and we're super excited to have our vice president of our team on the line, Kirk Fisher. So for our agenda today, um, I'm going to highlight our channel and sales update going to go through um, some updates with our program and some upcoming webinars. Akali's going to highlight our marketing update for our campaigns in GovDesign Hub. And Kirk is going to wrap it up for us and just give us a good summary of how Q3 went. And we really wanted to highlight the new extended offline offering that is available. So you guys will learn all about that and hopefully you know, know how to use it moving forward. So jump in to our channel and sales update. So first for our Better Together program, I just wanted to remind everyone we have our Q3 QBRs coming up over the next two weeks. Um, so all the Better Together partners should have those invitations on your calendar. Um, but if for some reason you need to adjust due to the holidays or anything like that, please let me know and I'm happy to be flexible for that. Um, and then just a friendly reminder of our partnership with White Lake Consulting. Uh, this is something that I have highlighted on many battlefield calls um, and we're just seeing a lot of success with the program overall. And right now we have about four out of our nine Better Together partners really actively taking advantage of this partnership. And would love to continue to see that to increase, you know, collaboration between Bruce and all of our partners. So if you're interested in pipeline generation, account building, sales plays, you know, please feel free to either reach, reach out to Bruce or myself. And then also I just wanted to highlight that Bruce actually does have a government sales training guide that is now available. Uh, so the link to download that was actually just in our November, uh, November newsletter. Uh, so if for some reason you didn't get that, please just let me know and I'm happy to resend it, but it is a link you essentially can download that sales guide. So that is really helpful. So just wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that. And then lastly, we're gonna be hosting a Battlefield call in December. Uh, that invitation was in the newsletter as well. So this is an ad hoc call as well, but it's going to be an important one because we're going to utilize that call to highlight up upcoming changes to our partner program for next year. So please feel free to send it to you know anyone that really is working with DLT, any partner. So again, that link was in our uh, newsletter, but if you need it again, please just let me know. Okay, so first I wanted to highlight our SDR program. So some of you all have been engaging with our SDRs and we're really excited about how that is going. Um, but April did speak on our July battlefield call to kind of initially introduce that program to everyone. And we currently have two SDRs on our team. Their names are Madison Chestnut and Francisco Flores. So Madison covers our Fed side and Francisco covers our SLED side. And their role is focused solely on pipeline building for DLT, Autodesk, and all of our partners. So I just wanted to really quickly highlight how that lead process is working. And we've gotten a couple of questions on that. So first, the lead will be sent to your partner rep, whoever is working that territory then our SDRs would contact you all and to set up that meeting between the partner, DLT, and the government customer. So this is a different but really key part of the SDR program. Uh, one, because we really want our SDRs to attend these meetings. 
um, they can learn a lot from you all by attending them and how to have really successful conversations with our customers. And then two, we just wanna ensure that, you know, they're finding the highest quality leads for you all that they can. So being a part of that meeting really is a good way for them to receive feedback, see how it goes and, you know, learn for the future. So the next, once that meeting takes place, you will receive a lead pass form and that's highlighted on the screen here. And this does look a little bit different than our typical lead pass form. Um, but it has five really quick yes or no questions. And it's really important that this form gets filled out because one, that's how we ensure that it was a good lead. You know, we're focusing on the right things, all of that. But it's also how our SDRs receive credit for the leads that they are generating. So they are measured on these surveys. So obviously we wanna make sure that they're getting their credit where it's due. So please, if you're working with them, please make sure you're filling that out. But we're really excited about how this program is going and how it's gonna benefit you all and DLT and Autodesk. Um, but if you have any questions on it, please let uh, April or myself know. And then next, a couple of just quick DLT and Autodesk updates. So I'm sure in channel news, most of you probably saw the multi-user licenses update where they could be renewed through August 7th of 2022. So that is a new update. Um, but I just wanted to kind of highlight the section where it said there would be no changes to new or renewals for multi-users um, for customers with specific needs, which includes government. So that policy where we are able to sell them and definitely that has not changed. So that is still staying the same despite the, you know, the um, expiration they put of August 7th. So just wanted to update you guys on that. And then next, I'm sure some of you are aware of the cybersecurity maturity model certification. Um, which is a mouthful, but CMMC for short. Um, so this is a new accreditation process that is developed by the DOD. And then once it's implemented, all DOD contractors will eventually be required to obtain a CMMC certification. Um, so this could be a while away, but we wanna make sure that all of our partners are aware and prepared for this change. And um, so we have a, a page on our website where all of our resources will be posted. So Don McLean is our a chief cybersecurity officer. Um, he has a lot of knowledge on this. So all the resources that he's putting out will be posted directly to that website. So it's good for you guys to just be aware of where all of that will be. And then when webinars and that kind of thing come up, I'll be making make sure to send it to you as well. And then lastly, we have a new podcast called the Gov IT Podcast. Um, just wanted to highlight it. I think you guys will find it interesting. You know, if you're just looking for a podcast to be listening to in your spare time, kind of help your career. Um, but they actually did just put out an episode on the CMMC requirements. So I thought that was really relevant. And John McLean speaks on that, but there's, many other episodes on there that I think you guys will find interesting and that will continue to post. And then just lastly for my section, I always highlight these. Um, we've had really good feedback from our partners on these webinars. Um, so our next market knowledge webinar is coming up on November the 16th. And this is gonna highlight the NIH and the registration is in our newsletter, but if you need it, please let me know. Um, but this webinar is going to provide just a high level overview of their missions, goals, operating divisions, and budget. So those are really useful and there actually are recordings available in the newsletter as well if you're not able to make them. So I want to make sure you guys were aware of that. And then that was all for my section. So I will pass it over to Kaylee. Thank you, Megan. Hi, everyone. Um, 
My name is Kaylee DeHaan. I'm the marketing campaign manager for the digital design team. Um, so I wanted to go through a few updates on marketing campaigns, um, including sort of a recap for October and a look at our plan for Q4. And then just a brief reminder about the new DLT marketing request forms. Um, a quick recap on Gov Design Hub and some of our latest content a highlight of events coming up for the rest of this year, and then just a reminder about industry memberships and, and opportunities with that. So had a lot of campaigns going on in October, which was great. Um, we had three main ones, one being the BIM 360 for capital improvements. Um, this was sent out to all of the Better Together partners as our campaign in a box for October. Um, so on the right, you can see um, different emails that we did and social media posts. So for that one, we had a targeted approach. Um, I sent you all the general content. And as I mentioned in the form, um, we did a targeted approach for water, uh, general buildings, parks and rec, trying to think of different types of municipal departments at local levels of government that could use these solutions. Um, and so we've seen really good results from that. I think because we did segment it and it's been a long-term approach, we've been running this campaign for about two months and we're expecting it to go to the end of the year. Um, so I would love any feedback from any of you of who've launched it. You know, what did you think? What kind of responses did you get? Things like that. Um, we also are doing our Autodesk University 2020 promo. Um, that campaign is wrapping up this week because the event starts next Tuesday. Um, we've done a few targeted email sends, social media, paid ads, and whatnot to really make sure that people are aware it's happening. It's free this year and, and register as many people as possible. And then the last focus for October was on Autodesk renewals. For this, we tried to focus on customers who maybe didn't get their renewals done in time for federal fiscal year end, and also looking at state and local government clients who needed to renew software as well. For Q4, um, we're gonna continue to focus on BIM 360, as I mentioned, really for the rest of the year. We're gonna do some partner agnostic marketing with the trade-in perpetual offers. Uh, that was highlighted in Autodesk channel newsletter that they put out yesterday, I believe. So we're gonna do some emails, landing pages, social media. Um, for anyone who does wanna also do that, I believe all of the resources Autodesk has created is on the dam. So I would definitely check that out. And then the last campaign we're thinking is gonna be the DLT campaign in a box. Um, probably on the power of automation and probably focused on Dynamo and what that could add to Revit and helping people create more intelligent, efficient workflows. Just a quick reminder, um, this is the marketing campaign request form. So we developed this form really to help standardize all the requests coming in um, and to make it easier for all of you just to quickly check what type of marketing channels you were looking to push content out on. Um, so I'm pretty sure all of you have this form, but just wanted to go through a couple quick reminders. Um, if you guys have graphics that you can send over with your campaigns, that's great. And we'll take a look to see if, make sure those are on brand. But if you don't have graphics or they're not on brand, we can always create graphics for you and then send them over for approval to make sure you're happy with it. Um, so just let us know if, if that's something you need support with. Um, one thing I did want to touch on is the um, under the email section where it says specifying your audience. So we have three options here. One is your current list of clients, and this we will pull from our systems and smart of all the people, you know, the, the wins that you have, the opens that you have that are just partner specific. We can also do um, potential new potential clients, and this is um, really people we go through, if you say, you know, I'm doing a campaign and I want to send it to um, sled clients and I really want to focus on utilities, we can go into some of the third-party databases we subscribe to and pull people based on the, speci uh, the specifications you provide. So if you let us know, you know, whether it's fed, sled, or both, any targeted departments or agencies, and then if there's specific job titles you would like to look at, we can go ahead and pull that information from you. And then lastly is um, you saying, hey, I have this list that either I bought or people I've collected over time 
and this is who I want to send it to. You can send us that as an Excel sheet as well. So those are your options when it comes for uh, email audience lists. And then one more reminder or announcement really is, since this form was only developed about a month and a half ago, a lot of people have been using it and I'd really like to gauge sort of how useful it is, what we can improve on. So I'm gonna be sending out a survey um, before the end of the year to all of you. I would really appreciate any feedback you have. At the end of the day, this is really meant to be a more streamlined approach for requesting information while still giving us and the rest of the marketing team all the information we need to launch the campaign successfully. So I would really love your feedback of how we can make it better, what's currently working, or any ideas that you have. On to Gov Design Hub. So this is just a reminder that we are adding new content weekly and we do have weekly editorial meetings just to make sure that we've always got things in the queue coming up. We're continuing to see strong growth month over month with over 1.5 thousand uh, users and about 90% of those being new visitors every month. So we're constantly getting in front of new people. Um, and I wanted to thank all of you for constantly sending us new content to add. Um, a lot of people have been sending us webinars that they're hosting. Um, some people have been doing Q and A's or blogs. We've got a couple of white papers. So I just wanted to say thank you to all of you who have been participating and adding new content. Um, if you have more ideas of things you'd like to talk about, you want to know if it's possible, or you have more resources, just um, let myself or Samantha Bloodgood know, and we can connect with you and find out what the resource is and when would be a good time to fit it into our editorial calendar. The last things I wanted to focus on before we get to um, industry memberships is the events. So Autodesk University, as I mentioned, is starting next week. I'm hoping at this point all of you have uh, registered for that. Um, it is free, so if you haven't and you don't have to attend all the sessions, you can do like most virtual conferences now where you just kind of go in and bookmark and say, you know, I'll watch this or I'll come back to it later. Um, so make sure you've registered if you haven't already. Um, like many of you, DLT is having a sponsorship. We've got a virtual booth as well, so please come by and say hi. Um, for this week, we also have Green Build going on. We're not really doing a whole lot. We're really just attending, um, going to some keynotes, some sessions. Um, it is virtual and uh, just trying to get an update on what's going on in the sustainable design industry, what's trending in terms of the push for net zero emissions and zero carbon facilities to make sure that we are aware of what's going on and how different digital design products can help reach those goals. And then lastly, just a reminder on industry memberships. So these are the four organizations we're a member of. And I wanted to let all of you know that as part of our Better Together program, um, you guys can take advantage of advertising opportunities on email or newsletters or on the website and different banner ads. So if you are interested in reaching any one of these groups and their main users, let me know. Um, we, depending on the organization, might have discount pricing at our disposal because of our level of membership. So feel free to send me an email if you wanna learn about any of these organizations. I've already met with a couple of you to discuss, but I just wanted to put that out as a reminder. Um, additionally, if you're a member of any of these organizations um, and want to talk about, you know, joint opportunities for, you know, hosting a session or sponsoring an event, let me know that as well. We're always looking to get more involved. And I think those were, were my main topics. Um, next up, I'm going to hand it over to Kirk Fisher, who's going to talk about uh, our Q3 and the new extended offline offering. Thank you, Kaylee. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, Megan, and thanks, Kaylee. Thank you, everybody, for attending, and thanks for giving me a few minutes here to do a, kind of a, it's a bit more than Q3, sort of a year-to-date wrap-up through Q3, and then I'll address the new extended offline offering. First, I want to thank you for your partnership, your contributions to the business throughout the year and year-to-date. Go ahead, Megan please. You know, it's been a very solid Q1, Q3 year to date, despite a challenging year over year compare and of course a, gl a global pandemic. Um, you know, I, 
paused and thought about what word I should use, solid, strong, fantastic, just okay. Uh, this is the word I decided on. You know, it's it's not necessarily a year to write home about. It's not maybe not one of those years, at least year to date. But, you know, relative to what's going on in the rest of the world, I think relative to what's going on at Autodesk around the world and on the commercial side of the business, you know, it's a solid year so far. So thank you for your contributions to that business. You know, we're going to, well, so far through Q3, um, we've had, you know, a little bit of growth in Autodesk billings year over year. Uh, the same applies to annual contract value or ACV. Go ahead, Megan, thank you. You know, as I said in the, uh, <clears throat> the bullet above, despite a challenging year over year compare. So we had about $25 million of non-repeatable three-year deals that we closed last year that you know we're not going to see this year. You guys are, are very familiar with this dilemma. Um, that non, that those three-year deals, of course, are not repeatable that, that this year. We'll see them again when we circle back around to those deals in a couple of years. But, you know, what we've been able to do together is think about it. We have filled that gap. Right now, I'm forecasting for the end of the year that we will fill that gap in the non-repeatable business and still grow on top of that. So I'm forecasting about you know, about 3% year-over-year growth in Autodesk billings and about 5% year-over-year growth in annual contract value. You know, we'll see how Q4 plays out, but, you know, I'm fairly bullish on finishing at that position. And, you know, if you guys listened to Autodesk's Q2 earnings report, analyst call rather and there's another analyst call for q3 scheduled on november 24th i encourage everybody to tune in and listen to those if you don't do it regularly um we'll see what the q3 report looks like but remember the q2 report was autodesk was forecasting billings for the year to be down anywhere from minus three percent to minus half a percent now that was after um, Q2 ended in July. So we'll see what they have to say about Q3 and if they adjust or revise their full fiscal year guidance. So assuming, let's assume that guidance stays the same for the full fiscal year. So Autodesk forecasting billings globally to be down anywhere from three to percent, three percent to half a percent year over year, you know, we're forecasting billings to be up about that same amount, ballpark about 3%. So again, we'll see how Q4 plays out for Autodesk globally, how it plays out for us. But all of that to say that all things considered, I consider it, you know, a solid year to date. And, you know, we closed our largest ever deal this year in Q1. We're having good success in the federal market with our three-year financing program. And finally, renewal rates are holding steady approximately at historical percentages. So we've not seen any decline in, in renewal rates, whether that's M2S or subscription renewals or maintenance renewals. So, you know, we always want that to be better. We want our renewal rates to be stronger. We're focused on that. You're focused on that. We're going to focus on that even more as we go into next year. So. Speaking of focus, you know, for Q4, hey, the focus is let's finish strong. Um, one more, Megan, go ahead, please. You know, we're under, Megan talked about this during the last battlefield call and Kirk, with Kirk Devine last month. You know that in the federal market right now, we're under a continuing resolution. The federal government is operating under a continuing budget, budget resolution through December 11th. Hey, that's no surprise. This is 23 years in a row. Uh, you have to go back to 1997 was the last time that the federal government passed 
all 12 appropriation bills on time hasn't happened in 23 years. So no surprise to us here. We all know that the government is still, the federal government is still spending money. They can do that under continuing resolution. We all know that, as Megan talked about last month, that most of the spend for Autodesk software and associated services comes out of the agency's operations and maintenance budget. And that really isn't impacted by the continuing resolution. These agencies can spend up to what they spent last year. So there's no hesitation, no cause for alarm, no reason to wait. This is also a good time to start planting seeds for, for new business, for net new subscriptions, for new programs coming online because we know a budget will be approved, the money will start to flow approximately in the December, January timeframe. So now's the time to, you know, to plant seeds, to get out, create awareness, create demand. And again, Megan and Kirk talked about that last month. We have about, uh, right now, I looked last night, about a $37.5 million pipeline for Autodesk software for Q4, so all deals that are right now forecasted to close in Q4. This is a combination of deals we're committing that we're forecasting and upside opportunities. So this is the total pipeline of commit and upside opportunities. So, you know, a reasonably healthy pipeline with some significant upside opportunities, and this is not including business that might come early from February or March. So we have the pipeline to get to some of the billings and ACV uh, finish numbers that I talked about earlier. And go ahead, Megan. You know, this is possibly the last opportunity to sell multi-year, multi-user subscription. Megan addressed this a couple minutes ago. Um, talking about the recent announcement from Autodesk a couple days ago, you know, the, Megan used the word and the announcement uses the word indefinitely that we have the ability to sell new and renew one year and three year multi-user subscriptions indefinitely. I'm reading that word indefinitely as through the end of this fiscal year. We cannot assume that we will have the ability to sell new one year and three year multi user subscriptions next fiscal year. So let's make hay while the sun's shining. I do want to point out that John Benz is on the line with us. I have one more slide. I'm going to be addressing the extended offline subscription offering, and I'm going to give John a chance if he'd like to add any color commentary to anything I've said, whether it's the topics on this slide or the extended off offline offering on the next slide. My last bullet here, Megan, go ahead, is just let us know how we can help you maximize your results in Q4. We're in this together, uh, but the focus is absolutely, absolutely on finishing the year strong. Let's go to the next slide, Megan. And go ahead and yeah, just this first click here. So let me run through this and then we'll stop and we'll see if John has anything to add in terms of color color commentary and then we'll we'll wrap up the call. So some of you may or may not know that a new offering is now available called extended offline subscription. It uh, we can sell it effective with the October 7th price list, so it's available today. Next, Megan, thank you. Here's what it is. It's a single user subscription. It's a standard single user subscription. Here's the difference between this offering and a standard single user subscription. This offering requires an internet connection only once during the subscription term. So whether that's a one-year term or a three-year term, depending on the subscription, 
This extended offline subscription only requires an internet connection once to authenticate the license. Once you sign in and authenticate the license, once you start the product for the first time, sign in, authenticate, the user can disconnect from the internet and not connect again through the remainder of the subscription term. You know, you should know that standard single user subscription has a 30 day offline limit. In other words, we, we all talk about the, the ping, the internet ping that standard single user subscription uh, does behind the scenes. And we all know that it does that uh, approximately every 30 days. It communicates with Autodesk to revalidate the license and exchange some other information behind the scenes. Go ahead, Megan, please. There is a 50% price premium for extended offline above standard single user. So in other words, this offering sits exactly halfway between single user and multi-user subscription. There is flexibility with discounting if the customer balks at the price. And I'm, I'll, I'll address this better here, I think, in the next bullet or two. Uh, Megan, why don't you go on and I'll, I'll kind of touch on this discounting topic again. And, and here's really the, the key takeaway for you is that we want to test this offering in the market. This is a bit of a test over the next couple quarters to see uh, you know, which agencies can use this subscription offering successfully? Who wants to use it? Who can use it? Who can use it? Um, you know, this is probably not the, uh, you know, it's not the answer for everybody. We know that, that particularly in the federal market, is this, this offering is just not going to work for many customers, whether they're working with classified information and they're in an enclave which is never connected to the internet or other situations where you know federal agencies may have the users may have internet connectivity but the agencies will not accept the communication the chatter that happens behind the scenes between the product and the Autodesk servers out on the cloud out on the internet so we know it's not a solution for everybody, but it might be a solution for some agencies. Um, and we, you know, we need to test the waters. Uh, we need to help Autodesk figure out, you know, what at the end of the day, you know, what really the right solution or combination of solutions is. We know that that notionally the goal is to get every customer to the named user model. Um, you know, ultimately that's where we want to go. We may not be able to get there with every single customer on the planet, including every single government customer, but we might be able to get to get there with many of them or possibly most of them. So the call to action here for you is to help us identify customers. This could be a good solution for, and it's only available on the government price list. This offering is not available to commercial customers. It's not available globally. Uh, there is an exception process for commercial customers, for other customers around the world. Um, those opportunities will require deal review board approval. So those opportunities, you'll need to go through the deal review board process with Autodesk. Um, so this is a, a, an offering that's unique to U.S. government and the DLT price list at this time. So let me pause there. I said a lot, threw a lot against the wall there. John, um, did, would you like to add anything, any color to this? You don't have to if, if you feel like I covered it pretty well, but I do want to give you an opportunity to add any color, John. Uh, yes, uh, definitely. Thanks, Kirk. Um, the the first uh, comment I have is on the the previous slide. You don't have to you don't have to go back. But when we look at the the multi user, we definitely will have the the multi user annual, as Kirk said, and and that's indefinite until we come up 
with a solution that meets these agencies' requirements. Uh, the Kirk had mentioned that this is not uh, the single user extended offline offering isn't going to work for everybody, but it is the first step to determine how many of these agencies can use it as we build out a solution to eventually replace the multi-user. But right now, multi-user is available indefinitely and an annual multi-user is available indefinitely until we come up with a, an alternative solution. I would also say that while the multi-user, multi-year has said to be discontinued, we are working on getting approvals to be able to sell multi uh, three-year multi-user next year. Uh, we are working on that, but at the same time, I would perceive that we don't have that authorization yet so that if anybody does have um, multi, uh, multi-year, multi-user uh, potential, make sure you get it in this year because there's no guarantee that we will have that moving forward. In, re in regards to the extended offline subscription, uh, just to add some additional color where this might work, if you have um, an agency or individuals that were, were potentially deployed overseas and they can connect once to the internet, they're going to be out in the field for a year, two years, three years, whatever that, that term is, at that point, this offering may work uh, extremely well for them. They can connect once, load it on, and, and then it uh, would be active um, for the time that they're in the field. Um, where it won't work is if they cannot currently use single user and they're connected to the internet, this offering probably will not work uh, because even though it's not pinging, the server for a license key every 30 days, it still pings the server for with PII and other data packets. Uh, and that is probably more important to many of these agencies than the license ping. Uh, but as Kirk said, we want to try and test this out to see where this will work, if it, it's gonna work in some of the state and local agencies, um, as well as you know, any of the, the federal agencies that don't have the higher level security offerings. And I'll, I'll reiterate what Kirk had said, is that if you have some potential agencies that you think that this could be a fit, please bring those forward so that we can look at those and get some licenses in there so that they can test them on their network. And we can get Greg like Nice and um, you know, other uh, technical resources involved in that to help address any questions that would occur. Yeah, thank you, John. And I would just add, you know, remember everybody, you think, well, why would a customer, you know, why wouldn't they just buy single user, standard single user subscription? And they, and they, you know, they certainly can if they don't have disconnected users or a disconnected user situation, like the example that John gave. Um, it could be attractive for a customer who has disconnected users or wants to have disconnected users and they don't want to deal with multi-user licensing. And you guys know that that requires the installation of a license server, whether it's on the same machine that the product is running on or whether it's a server somewhere out on the network. You know, if a customer doesn't want to have to deal with installing, configuring, maintaining, the license server, this single user extended offline might be attractive to them. And the last thing I'll say is just to, is I think you've heard it in our voice here and, and in the comments we've made, but just be cautious with this offering. Um, bring potential opportunities forward to the team, to, to John, to me, to Kirk Devine's team to the DLT reps, let's talk about these together. You know, we don't expect that we're gonna have a lot of these, uh, at least early on. So let's talk about them together before you get too far along in a conversation with a customer, because we do wanna be careful with setting the proper expectations. 
as John indicated, you know, there's still some chatter behind the scenes uh, with this with this offering. Um, we just need to be careful with with setting expectations. So I, I won't belabor the point. Let's talk about them and bring them forward if you if you have some ideas there. Thank you, John, for for all of those comments, John. That, those were also helpful comments on the multi-year, multi-user situation. So the the news to everybody there is: stay tuned as John and Kirk Devine and the team work to explore the possibility of getting approvals for all of us to be able to continue to sell the multi-user, multi-year offering next year. We'll see how that plays out. But again, let's uh, focus on Q4, finishing strong and uh, setting winning conditions for next year as we work throughout the quarter. Thank you for listening. Megan, I'm going to flip it back to you for closing remarks. That sounds good. Cool. Well, thank you to Kirk and John and Kaylee for joining us. Um, this had a ton of information. Um, I will be sending out a recording of this. So you're able to watch it back, send it to any of your teammates that may not have been able to join. But my contact information is on the screen. Please let me know if you guys have any questions or if there's anything we can help you with. Other than that, um, thanks for joining us today. Hope you guys have a good Thanksgiving and we will see you next time.